Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to do the first of a three-part series in the Ask the Photographer series, and this is going to address what has been one of the fairly common questions that I've gotten over the last couple of years, and that is in reference to the process of how to calibrate a lens. And when I say calibrate, I'm referring to calibrating the autofocus, often referred to as AFMA, and that is a micro adjustment of the autofocus of autofocusing lenses. Now, this subject can be a somewhat intimidating to uh, photographers, particularly beginners and uh, even amateurs, because it isn't necessarily a simple process. And, but I'm going to do my best to demystify it to the best of my ability. In this first episode, I'm going to deal with what actually micro-adjusting or calibrating a lens is and what it entails. I'm going to detail what you might need to do that kind of calibration. In the second episode, I'm going to detail the process by which I will automate the process with a piece of software called Riken Focal, and I'll also deal with um, the various components from either Tamron or Sigma, their USB docks, and how I use both of those components together um, to further calibrate lenses from those manufacturers. In the third episode, however, I'm going to show you a method that I also often use where I manually uh, micro-adjust my lenses without the use of any kind of software outside of, of Lightroom, basically, or some similar piece of software that will allow you to review images and compare them back and forth. And so um, stay tuned for all three of these segments, and hopefully taken as a whole, it will help to demystify the process for you. And so what is micro-adjustment, or AFMA? Well, the reality is, is that every autofocus lens, it doesn't, it behaves a little bit differently on each different camera body. And so, for example, right now I own four uh, DSLR type bodies that require micro adjusting. And so I've got a Canon 5D Mark IV, I've got a Canon 6D, and then I have um, crop sensor Canon 80D and 70D. All of these DSLRs that use a mirror as a part of the process and thus their primary method of autofocus is through the viewfinder, um, which is known as phase detect autofocus. It all requires some degree of calibration. And so I may have the same lens that I have calibrated for all four different bodies, and I'm going to get a slightly different value on each one of the bodies because there is a unique relationship between the lens and its autofocus capabilities and then the actual camera body. I found, for example, that my copy of the 5D Mark IV, that lenses tend to require a little bit of extra calibration, and it's almost always I need to uh, adjust for some, some front focus. And so that tells me that there's probably a little bit of a front focus bias in the camera body itself as related to others. So not to overly complicate this, but just to simply say that every lens behaves a little bit differently on a different camera body. And right now in my personal kit, I have 10 autofocusing lenses that are not made for mirrorless bodies. So let me just stop right there and just note on that. For example, I've got here Canon's EF-M, that's for the mirrorless system, M system. This is the 22 millimeter F2. Because, um, because mirrorless bodies, they use an autofocus system that is more akin to what you would call live view, at least on a camera, or a Canon camera, where you're actually using the LCD screen um, for autofocus instead of the viewfinder. Mirrorless bodies use a focus system that is more akin to that. And as a result, that kind of focus, known as contrast AF, it, uh, it doesn't have the same inconsistencies with autofocus. And so as a result, um, with mirrorless systems, you do not need to perform AFMA or micro adjustment because of the different nature of the autofocus system. And so going back to what I was mentioning, I have 10 lenses that would fall into the category of needing AFMA. To my knowledge, there is not one in that kit, and I have lenses from several different manufacturers that are part of my personal kit. 
There is not one lens, either a Canon lens or otherwise, that does not require some degree of micro adjustment to get the best results out of the lens. Now, what micro adjustment will not do is make a lens sharper. It doesn't change the behavior of the lens itself in terms of its optical properties. What it does change, however, is the way that the autofocus performs. Thus, it is going to allow you to um, get perhaps sharper looking results just because you're nailing focus more consistently. And, and I, while it, there is some time involved in the process of doing a micro adjustment, I personally feel that it is well worth the effort because I want to get the maximum performance out of the lenses that I purchase. And so if I have purchased hundreds or even thousands of dollars in a lens, I might as well get the best possible performance out of it. And so I'm willing to invest the time to do a micro adjustment. Now, at this point, because I understand the way that it works, yes, I can do some of that on the fly. If I see that I'm getting a consistent front or back focus, and just to, to demystify that, um, front focus means that if, you know, let's say that this represents the plane of focus, that consistently the lens is focusing in front of that plane of focus. And so that's considered front focus. And so what you've got to do by adding values in is that you're going to add a plus value that's going to move focus towards that plane of focus. Now, if you have an issue where you're consistently focusing beyond the plane of focus, that is called back focus. And thus, you're going to use negative numbers to pull it back towards the front and again, to try to get consistently on that plane of focus. Now, there's more at play than just the micro adjustment. Um, and if you have a lens that focuses inconsistently, meaning that it doesn't consistently either front or back focus, but there's a certain amount of randomness, that's something that cannot basically be fixed with just doing a micro adjustment. A micro adjustment can correct for a consistent front or back focus tendency, but it cannot adjust for inconsistent focus where there's just an issue with the lens AF system and it's not consistently acquiring autofocus or acquiring correct autofocus. And that was one of my chief criticisms of some of the earlier um, Sigma Art series lenses, for example, is that I found folks to be inconsistent, that sometimes it would just be random. Sometimes it would be front focus, sometimes it would be back focus. And so thus, even using the Sigma USB dock couldn't fully correct for that because it wasn't an issue with a micro adjustment, it was an issue with the autofocus consistency. And let me just say on that note, I'm not here to, um, to slur Sigma in any way, that I've seen a market improvement in some of the recent Sigma Art series in terms of their auto autofocus consistency. And thus, um, they, they've come a long way with that and I'll, I'll commend them for that. And so that gives you perhaps a, a brief idea of what AFMA is. Now let's talk about what you need to actually properly adjust for that. One of the first things that you need if you're going to, uh, really for any of the methods, is that you need a computer of some kind that you can review images on. And if you're going to use an automated piece of software like Rican Focal, then of course you're going to need a computer. But even if you're doing a manual adjustment, you're going to really need, the best way is to be able to very, you know, to magnify the images in a, and be able to compare them side by side. And we'll, we'll detail that process a little bit further. And so you're going to need a, a computer or a laptop of some kind. A laptop is more convenient because very likely if you have a, a tower, um, a computer of some kind, it means that you're, you're gonna be limited to the room that you're in and thus have some issues with that. So typically a laptop is going to work best for that. Beyond that, you're going to need some kind of test target. And, uh, and so you can either print some off, off the internet, and uh, then also, you know, you can purchase, I've actually purchased these from um, Rican Focal, and they are just kind of on a foam core. And so they are just kind of a hard um, test tar targets that allow me to just, you know, keep them around and use them um, consistently without kind of paper copies that can get beaten up over the years. And so I've had these now for probably two years, and they've held up well for me. And of course, you could always go and you could have some of these made up yourself at an office store um, on foam core, but you may not save a whole lot of money as compared to just ordering them from some place that sells them. Now, the reason why you want a target something like this is for the simple reason 
that this is, is designed to be a very high contrast area that autofocus is going to easily pick up on. And so you want that because you don't want to be hunting for it. You don't want to introduce variables that are going to complicate the process. And so having a good test target is important. Also extremely important is using a tripod for doing calibration. And uh, I've got a travel tripod here because it fits easily on the desk here for demonstration purposes. But a good stable tripod is important because if you're going to get AFMA consistent, you need to remove as many variables as possible. And part of that, of course, is any kind of movement of your hands with the camera. If you're trying to adjust kind of just on the fly as you shoot, Note that you're not going to get the best results because there's too many variables there in terms of camera movement and you know inconsistencies of where you place the focus point, all of those things. And so I definitely recommend getting on a, a tripod and beyond that, setting your camera up with at least a two second delay and so that there's not vibration that is going to influence the results that you get. Another thing that is very, very important for doing a calibration is to have very good, very even lighting. And again, I'm just showing this for uh, demonstration purposes here. This is not necessarily my recommended um, lighting source. I tend to use um, soft boxes or ring lights that are going to produce a really even lighting result. But, you know, sometimes on the fly, like when I'm traveling and needed to do a quick calibration, I'll uh, sometimes have something like these lum cubes along, 1,500 lumens of light. A couple of these, you've got 3,000 lumens of light. So it's a lot of light. However, if you go over the long haul, you know, these things will start to heat up after a while. And so they're not as good as having a good fixed light source. Now, if you don't have lighting like that, you'll have to probably use available daylight. And so if you shoot during um, good bright daylight times, uh, it will work fine. That's, that's, a, that's a great lighting source. The one challenge, of course, is that when you go outside, um, you are introducing all the variables of outside. So, you know, potential of changing lighting. And by the way, if you're using the software calibration like Rican Focal, the software really doesn't like like when the uh, lighting, the ambient lighting changes and you'll start throwing up error messages because that can influence the results. And so just note that if you're shooting outside, you may have to deal with things like wind and increased possibility of some, you know, vibration or movement through that. And you'll also have to deal with the fact that your lighting may vary some during your test and you're going to have to take that into account. But of course, that is the uh, most cheap and readily available lighting source. And so, and that may be what you can afford and what you can use. So going beyond that, let me just talk about one final variable that's a part of that. And that is how to actually put in an AFMA value. Now, obviously, I primarily shoot Canon bodies here, and so I'm kind of um, speaking in reference to a Canon body here today. But if um, you go into the menu system, typically in Canon bodies, it's under an autofocus menu. And so you will find, um, for example, on this ADD that it is under autofocus AF micro adjustment. And so um, it's going to give you typically three options. You can disable that, you can adjust all by the same amount, or you can adjust by lens. And, and I will almost always refer to the adjust by lens because as I've said, there is some variability in all lenses. And by the way, um, it's, you know, sometimes, yes, Canon lenses require less AFMA, but that is not always true. Um, sometimes it's true, it's not always true. Sometimes third party lenses require very little micro adjustment. Sometimes they require a great deal of micro adjustment. So within the camera body, you basically have um, a total of 40 degrees of movement or a total of 40 values that you can input starting at zero and then going to 20 degrees in either direction and so a minus 20 up or up to a plus 20 and so if you have a lens that falls outside of that range of micro adjustment you probably need to have send the lens in for service or calibration from the manufacturer because something is not quite right and my experience is is that I've um, calibrated you know, dozens and dozens of lenses and basically all of them have fell, fallen within that degree of micro adjustment within the camera body. Now, 
When it comes to what you can input on your camera body, some lower end models, they do not allow for micro adjustment. And that is a, you know, that is a basically insurmountable obstacle. Because if you have a lens that does require a fair bit of micro adjustment, you're kind of out of luck other than you might be able to send the camera and the lens to the manufacturer and have them calibrate it for you. And that may be a possibility, but you know, there's a reason why this is a feature that is offered in better cameras cameras because um, those that own better cameras tend to be a little bit more picky about the uh, focus consistency and results that they get. Now then beyond that, some cameras will allow you only one um, adjustment value. Now if you're shooting with a prime lens, for example, that's not a problem because you only have one focal length. However, if you're shooting a zoom lens, um, you basically have to kind of choose a value and hope that it it works on both the, the wide and the telephoto end, which by the way, in my experience is almost never the case. I almost always find different values for the wide end and the telephoto lens. Most of the newer and better camera bodies, and when I say newer, I'm talking about within the last five years, uh, six years, um, they will allow you to make an adjustment both on the wide end and the telephoto end. So that's certainly very helpful. Then of course beyond that, if you have something like the Tamron Tap-In or the Sigma USB um, console there, these will allow you to take it a step further. And so you can not only calibrate by focal length, but you can also calibrate by focus distance. And typically they'll allow you to have three values, a minimum focus, somewhere along medium range, and then out towards infinity. Or in, in other cases, it'll even give you four different positions that you can, um, or four different distances that you can calibrate for. So obviously that requires even more time, but the upside is, is that it, it allows you to have the best of results in all kinds of focus scenarios and focus distances. So once again, it's an even more time consuming process, but if I'm going to own a lens, I think that it is worth it. Now, one kind of ironic advantage that comes for third party lenses now from Sigma and Tamron, where there is a console like this, is it means that even if you own a camera that doesn't allow for doing AFMA, you actually can arrive at a calibration value and put it into the lens itself um, through using one of these devices. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit further in our next episode on how that works out. And so um, ironically, you may find that you can get a better autofocus consistency out of a third party lens if you have a body that doesn't allow you to calibrate in camera um, than you will with getting them with shooting a lens that it comes from the first party um, that doesn't have that kind of console. And so those are some of the basics of what is involved in doing a calibration. And um, in the next episode, I'll detail it a little more carefully if we're doing a software based. And then in that third episode, we'll take a look at um, how you can uh, achieve auto, a micro calibration of autofocus or micro adjustment even if you don't want to invest in software and you want to do it manually. So stay tuned for the other parts of this series. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you haven't already, check out DustinAbbott.net. And uh, you can also, of course, follow me on social media down below, sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.